very centralized, but it's also fragmented at the same time too, which brings a sort of a, a different mix to things. So we look at the supply chain in a very sequential type way, one step, two step, three step for that matter. But what we find though is that a lot of the data is very centralized. So you have in each firm, uh, each organization, or each link in a chain has a, works from a very centralized type of information system, although it is a very sequential type of a process. What we see now is that we see we have a food system that is, as I mentioned a little earlier, that's a bit fragmented in a sense, right? Uh, so it, that, in that sense, we have a number of issues related to traceability, uh, transparency, as well as trust within our system. So that's where the blockchain piece comes in there, is that it provides that extra layer of being able to have an entire network to handle those things of trust, transparency, and, and, uh, and traceability. And when we talk about those type of things, those are very important because many of our firms within the food chain, they're making claims with respect to the product. This is organically grown, it's fresh, it's range free. Those type of claims, marketing claims that are made on it, but we have no way, real way sometimes of verifying it, or at least verifying it in a very, very fast or quick manner in that sense. So it can add to that whole transparency piece that people can know with a great degree of certainty that it was done in a very transparent way, right? That also goes for trust. It also also goes for traceability as well. Traceability for sake is that when we find that we need to go back all the way to the farm level or something that may be in storage or something that may be in the processing phase, that we can trace it and know exactly where it is at, the mo at a moment in time. So that, that traceability piece that fits well for us also. And trust, you know, consumers are always looking to have trust in their product. Um, the blockchain allows us to do those type of things. So that blockchain is just a way of which that we can, as a network, as opposed to the sequential process, the blockchain will allow a network to verify that is at that level of trust, trans traceability, as well as transparency. This is a new technology, and, I, and it, it, I've never seen a piece of technology that has come on as fast as the blockchain type thinking here. But the blockchain is simply a number of transactions, if you look at it. Each block is, represents a transaction, a transaction somewhere within the supply chain, if you will. And then that block, it is connected by a chain to another transaction. So as we see move, far, food move from the farm to the fork, for example, we see these transactions that happen all along the way. So the block represents the transaction, the chain represents the link to the next block in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the chain itself. And therefore, that's how we have this blockchain, it's sort of a schematic it's sort of a schematic look at what it is it intended to be in a sense. So where it lives, it lives on everyone's computers for that matter, right? Mm -hmm. It's, uh, again, it's not centralized with one firm, but instead um, that type of technology rests on everyone's computers so that the entire network has, a, has impact on or has some insight in terms of how uh, that product is being moved through the supply chain. I think it's both in that case, right? Because again, when we look at the food supply chain, or particularly if we look at it from a farm to the fork type perspective, we're looking at some level of interconnectedness all the way through, right? From one end to the other end of the supply chain. So there's no one person or no one organization that owns it, so it's not a private piece. Although there's some blockchains that could be considered private, but really the entire, the idea is that is that we need to decentralize the data. Right? Not hold it in one space, if you will, but move it across the entire network for the network to validate it, verify it, and do all those sorts of things in that nature. You know? so, so in that case, yeah, I think from farm to the fore, we can see some benefits that may involve the marketing group, sales group for that matter. Right? They can make some claims on a product and be very certain that that claim can stand to the, to the scrutiny that it may come up against. Right? Or goes all the way back as well to the, to the producer level from that standpoint. So we can trace a product all the way back to those locations as well. We're primarily seeing things on a pilot basis at this point, but there's a lot of movement afoot, and there's a, a several consortiums, one sort of consortium in particular that is involving 15 or 16 different companies that are testing it from a food safety perspective, right? So foods that are involved all the way again from production all the way to the retailing of product, so they're tracing that product all the way through and using things such as the Internet of Things, you know, using sensors, using the Internet, using cell phone technology uh, and, uh, and artificial intelligence for that matter to be able to trace that product all the way through the system. So there are a number of use cases, pilot studies are going on right now. There's one notable one very large right now involving, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, a number of different firms. But at this point, we have seen probably somewhere in the neighborhood, just in the food industry itself, probably about 10, 10 type of pilot studies going on, not just in the United States, but all across the world.